Greetings Minecrafters and welcome to another bluebird of a day and an exciting Minecraft discussion on all things well-being. This is Dr. Kimberly Quinn. It is my honor and privilege and I'm just so freaking excited to have this talk today. Um, remembering that thoughts come first and feelings come second and action and behavior third. That would be our youngest putting the goats away with Ritz crackers. Another favorite of theirs. Anyway, so it's all about becoming the boss of your brain and this is super important um, becoming the boss of your brain in general but for any of you who have when the holidays happen just want very much to make them go away or you know just pretend they're another day and uh, I actually was having a chat with my good friend Dr. Dave the other day and I said you know what I'm not even gonna I, not that I plan these videos anyway, because I really don't. Occasionally, I have a few bullets I want to talk about. Um, there she is putting the goats way over there. But today, I'm like, I'm like, you know, I don't even. I, I got this. I don't need to do any even the slightest of planning because I, I got you. Because I know how it, I know what it feels like. You know, you you know the backstory. I definitely know what it feels like. So, um, first of all, I guess what I want to say is. Wow, an amazing blue sky. It's like not one cloud up there. Wow. Okay, the number one, first one here is to give yourself permission to feel how you feel. Especially, I mean, that's true anyway, like in general, because no matter what mistakes you have made or people offended against you or whoever made whatever mistakes, even if it's severe, 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 you have the right to feel how you feel. That's just how it is. I mean, that's, you know, just, you know, what it need, you know, part of what it means to be human is like my thoughts, my feelings, you can't take them. You know, you can't take them away from me, and, and you have every right to feel how you feel. So, um, and this this time of year has a lot to do with, often, often brings about, let's say it more eloquently and accurately, uh, this time of year can bring about, elicit lots of feelings of guilt and shame. So, it's super important to distinguish between the two, because guilt says, I made a mistake, it's an action word. Whereas shame says, I am the mistake, far more toxic. Hanging on to guilt for a long time is also toxic, um, but the shame one, which I am the mistake means feeling defective and flawed, like damaged goods, you know, like like your spirit Swiss cheese or something. And that is just not, not true. Our spirits are perfect, living in this human human existence of imperfection, right? And so give yourself permission if you don't, you know, if you don't want to go to whoever's house, if you don't even have an option to go to anybody's house, and you're completely alone, and you feel lonely, just just own that. Um, if you know, just you just it just you have a toxic situation you don't want to be a part of, don't be a part of it. Don't answer the phone either. Just don't like unplug the drug. Just check out. It's totally okay to feel how you feel. If you're not welcome, you know, acknowledge how that feels. If you've sort of Assuming you're not welcome, but you don't really know because you're carrying around so much guilt and shame about mistakes or whatever like that. Again, just really get real with yourself. What am I feeling? It's so important to actually sit with those and and label them. Am I feeling lonely? Am I feeling angry? Am I feeling frustrated, sad, depressed, hurt, or some combination of those? Label it and, and feel it and just and wrap around it. Then it's like catch and release fishing. Because, because we don't want any of our life minutes going down the rabbit hole. So we're kind of acknowledging those feelings, yet not residing there. So this is, after the permission thing, this is where the distraction come in, comes in. And I had a friend just say to me, we were talking about this, and my friend said, yeah, you know what? It works. And it's so true. And I'm not thinking of um, one of my cousins uh, growing up. Loved him. My favorite, actually. Uh, he he worked at McDonald's through high school like for a while. He got a job in high school, worked there for quite a while, and put himself through college and everything. He's an amazing person. And uh, the first year, you know, he had to work on Thanksgiving. It's all, well, yeah, you know, mom, it's because I'm the newest, you know, low low person on the totem pole thing, low in the food chain, whatever. That made sense. Then like the next year came, the next year again. Then he's been there, like four years. It's like sorry, I, they got they scheduled me. I forgot to ask for it off, and he like wink at me. Because, you know, get out of Dodge, man. I don't blame you. So so that, there, there's that. And other people distract them because what you don't want to do is sit at home feeling sorry for yourself. Not there for every reason. It might be some super legitimately, you know, terrible, hurtful things. But but you have to acknowledge those feelings. It's good to, to get out of that and go do something. Uh, maybe you want to be productive if, if that's your way to deal. 
and have your house spot organize a closet have your house spotless or just get out of it just get out of there um i would not suggest a hike in northern vermont since it's you know rifle season but if that's safe wherever you live or you know go out and go out to do something anything that's just fun to get out of there um then another one I've, i have a bunch of friends who are have similar not really similar situations to me but i guess maybe similar feelings i guess and and some of them have created their own traditions which is great great we don't have to buy into all this you know this well, hopefully the wind isn't making a lot of noise on this anyway buy into the whole because family is literally marketed which kind of turns my stomach because obviously you know Everyone would like, and probably, I can say everyone's a, too big of a word, most people would probably like to have family, even whatever that, that means. It might be one person, two people, or a big, huge, gigantic family, and that doesn't obviously happen for a lot of people. And so it's important to realize that all this tradition, stuff that people are pushing, because here's the news, you can make a turkey any day of the week. It doesn't have to be on Thanksgiving once a year. That's just, like, ridiculous to even think that. I make turkeys a lot, actually, because they're economical. My family likes them, they're healthy, I make soup after, whatever. And you know what, if you want to have shrimp or steak or, you know, a meatball sub on Thanksgiving because it's your own tradition, go for it. That's so important. Okay, so we have permission, we have distraction or keep busy, set your own tradition, right? Especially with food because Thanksgiving is an eating day. So you want to, and indulge yourself if you can. Indulge, you know, jump into an apple pie and eat it all by yourself. Get a fork or like a huge you know, carton of Ben and Jerry's and just go to town, you know? Um, and then another thing is, I'll tell you, uh, it ended up being, at that point in my life, the very best Thanksgiving I ever had in my life, um, which also goes kind of, uh, well, I guess it goes kind of with the distraction piece, but it's also very Gandhi. And this is going to be a, a gigantic paraphrase. But Gandhi said something to the effect of, when you're feeling blue or down or whatever, get out and do something for somebody. Get out and do something for somebody. It can be something small or it can be something huge. You know, you can, you know, go, go volunteer at a food shelf um, or there's so, there's so much need for volunteers right now. Or it can be something on a smaller level. You can, you know, just go out and um, you see somebody carrying heavy packages or something, just, just carry those. But I remember once at St. Mike's, and I didn't plan for this to happen, but I also don't believe in accidents. And I, we were, I was a, a senior, I think I was actually my first senior year, so we'll call, it, call me a junior. And I was in the townhouses, and my very good friend Debbie Dew, her name's Debbie, but I called her Debbie Dew, she's still Debbie Dew, and Father Mike, two dear, dear friends. And I was up at St. Mike's on Thanksgiving, of course, because I wasn't going to head back into the toxic zone, for sure. And uh, hey, she said to me, hey, Kim, what are you doing today? I'm like, what, you know, really? I mean, probably Burger King. How about you, right? I'm totally fine. I was totally fine with it. In fact, if the skiing was open, then it's probably where I would have been. And then she said, I mean, like, I was way fine with it. Because I even that back then, I was very okay with being by myself in a, in a quiet living room. So right next door, she says, hey, you know what? Father Mike and I are putting on a Thanksgiving for people, you know, local people who have nowhere to go. And I was like, cool. She's like, we could use the help. I said, cool. And it was like, it was like the day off, literally. And they had all the tables set up in the, t in the town housing. Uh, the townhouses at St. Mike's are... Nice senior housing, still not for this particular kind of event, not overly huge. They had made, uh, Debbie Dew and Father Mike had made this incredible use of her living room. Not like three inches went unused. Tablecloths over folding tables and, and then, you know, we just, we cooked and served and that's what I did. I served and it was, and then we had something to eat ourselves. We sat with people and, uh, there's Hamlet. And I tell you, I just look like, it was so fulfilling, so rewarding. I had no idea that was, I had no idea my day, my day was going to unfold in that way. People were sitting next to each other, really, because we tried to squeeze as many as, as we could in there, with fantastic homemade turkey and all the trimmings and all that, and all these people had nowhere to go, and they were all together. And we, we, I had nowhere to go either, I'm not different, right? So at that time, I had nowhere to go either, and I, I and, and, and Debbie do wanted to stay for her own reasons, and oh my gosh. At that time, without hands down, without question, uh, it was the best Thanksgiving of my life up at, up until that point. No question. Still to this day, it's one of them because two of my favorite people were there too. And I can't tell you what that, even though that wasn't the plan, like the plan was to just serve and help. And then I left there like 
flying on a cloud. It was just so good. So get out and do something for somebody, even if it's on a smaller level. Here comes Delaney. And then lastly is, is the gratitude thing. We've been talking about that. This is going to have a little bit of a different spin because we've been talking about how important it is each and every day because it's actually a cognitive neurological thing. It's not just, it's not just uh, touchy-feely. Look at her playing with the goats. Oh, looks like she can't catch him. Oh, that's funny. So, yeah, Hamlet. Hamlet's the old one. He's a little bit of a curmudgeon, but he's, he's very cute. Um, uh, yeah, so the gratitude thing today, when you want the holidays to be other than, you know, just to go away or just to be another day, and, and they really are. It's a, day, it's, a, it's a number on a calendar that's people created, right? I mean, without the calendars, one, you know, it's like it's all about the sun rising and the moon and stuff. It's, you know what I mean? It's just up, down, up, down. Sun rises, sun sets, the moon for months and stuff. And that's how, it, obviously, people kept track of things before there were ever numbers written on a calendar. The so numbers on a calendar thing is kind of dumb. You know, it's just, it is another day in reality. And every day can be Thanksgiving, too, if you're that person. But if you're not that person and you want the holidays to go away or just be another day and just kind of step out of the current of the whole thing, you know, again, give yourself permission for that. And the gratitude thing, that's where I was going, a little squirrel there with Hamlet. The, so to, I, if you, it's good to pick something that's independent of the whole day if you want to. You know, like I'm grateful for my eyesight, I'm grateful for my dog, I'm grateful that I have peace and solitude, I'm grateful I have work off, I'm grateful I'm healthy, I'm grateful, I'm, I'm a huge one with this, I'm grateful I'm a grown up now, even though it was fun to be a kid out in the woods and playing and things like that. With, with being a grown up comes voice and choice. So I can take this valuable day of my life minutes and spend it any way I want. I can go... I can go get a steak, I can go to Burger King, I can make myself a fabulous shrimp dinner, I can read all day and put my feet up and have a fire in the fireplace, I can go visit a friend, I can do whatever the frig I want because I'm a grown up. So be grateful for all that stuff. Okay, so let's just recap. Permission, give yourself permission to how you, for how you feel. Distraction, keep yourself busy. Once you sit and re feel that, it's important to feel, to feel is to heal, then it's important to not reside there, catch and release fishing, right? Feel the slime, little prickly catfish things, and throw it back. Um, Tradition. Start your own tradition. If that's an action and a food thing, like go do something or fun. Make sure it's fun. It, unless you, unless it fills you up to be productive, that's great. Okay, but whatever whatever it is it just you have to come. You want it to be positive for you. That's the whole point. Um, whatever, whatever that looks like for you. And then Gandhi, right? So do something for somebody else, whether it's on a small level, you know, going through all your your your, your cabinets and giving away a whole bunch of food. Check expiration but date, so that's important giving away some food or going to buy new food to give somebody or d just anything, even if it's a small, small, itty bitty scale, that and then the gratitude thing. Find three things to be grateful for. Today would be a great day to start a gratitude journal, actually. And again, I personally do what you want, obviously, but to keep it separate from the whole day might be a good idea. Or if you want to rope, rope your gratitude into, thank goodness I don't have to be with my toxic family, that is actually something I would say for sure. But as long as you're focused on the on the, the positive of it, or thank you for how much I've grown from all the adversity I've had in my life. That's a good one. So those are the five. So that's it. The holiday is just another day, which is really true. The only things, this is another little, like a little bonus, because just to be mindful, I'll be mindful that the only meaning anything has, including Thanksgiving or money or anything, is the meaning we give it. The meaning we give it. And the holidays ha have all this it's just it just blows up with all kinds of like marketing crap and everything it even gets worse as we get closer to to christmas and i would say hanukkah too but hanukkah doesn't seem to have this commercialism that christmas does but anyway the only meaning thanksgiving has is the meaning you give it no more no less so take that and run with it is what i would say and you know what have a very grateful day you can also rename the holiday or i'm sorry it's a non-day rename the day for you this is kim day saying that because it's me right make it um my one day a year to go do whatever whatever like that anyway make it yours and make it your own give it your own meaning and start that stuff over this is kimberly quinn signing off from northern vermont during rifle season still have a mindful very freeing grateful day